Spooky, scary skeletons and shivers down your spine. Shrieking skulls will shock your soul and seal your doom tonight. Spooky, scary skeletons. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Spooktober. My name is Nomad, and you might be wondering why there is no face cam for this video. You see, the last time I did a story time video such as what I'm about to do, you guys complained about the webcam as well as the fact that I was reading off of a Reddit story and there wasn't enough pictures to go with it. So I am taking out the distractions and I am instead going to try to focus this entire video on my voice as that is the main mode of commentary. You see, instead I am going to input pictures that depict what I am talking about. And it makes sense for this video, because what I'm going to be talking about is an actual event that has happened in my life. You see, every part of the story I'm about to tell you is completely true to my knowledge. The story I'm about to tell you all today is the story of my grandmother's house. Now both my grandparents are still alive, and they are wonderful, wonderful people. But, and this is not just me saying this, we all believe that their house is, or at least was, haunted. And I will explain all of that in just a moment. You see, to set the scene for this story, I want to explain to you how my grandparents' house came to be what I know of it as. My grandparents have lived in this house for really as long as they've been together. Uh, they were in that house before my father was born, and he's the oldest of two kids. And they bought this house when it was a just a brick house, just a normal standard brick house out in the middle of the country. Uh, I'm not sure if there was a prior owner, I highly doubt they were the first owners of it, but they bought the house and they turned it into something that they could live in for the rest of their life. They didn't plan on moving and they have not. My grandmother wanted to be a hairdresser. So she went to school, and when she came back, she didn't want to move into a different studio away from home, so my grandfather built her a studio attached to their house. A very small, single-person studio, and my grandmother worked there for her entire life, uh, up until she retired uh, a couple years ago. They also built upon a large patio, a concrete patio with... Uh, white walls, windows all around, it's very beautiful, the hot tub in the middle, it's a wonderful scene. And I don't know if in them constructing these uh, additions, if it unsettled some spirit or uh, unrested a ghost uh, from the afterlife. But my father, to my knowledge, was the first one to hear the ghost. My father was home alone, my grandfather was at work working at a body shop. My grandmother was out on a shopping trip. My aunt was at school. Well, my father stayed home sick. My father was downstairs watching television in the living room when he heard footsteps upstairs. That's all he heard. Footsteps sounding like someone was walking. He could hear the floorboards creak under the person, he assumed, footsteps. It wasn't just a Oh, that could be anything, or maybe that was a rodent, maybe that was a raccoon, or a squirrel up on the roof, and it's just really loud. Maybe it fell. No, this was easily depicted footsteps. So my father was very, very concerned. He grabbed a baseball bat that was sitting in the living room. He was 12 at the time, playing coach-pitched Little League baseball. He grabbed his baseball bat and slowly crept upstairs to see what was up there waiting for him. When he arrived, he did not see a ghost. In fact, he saw nothing. The area that the, the entity or spirit was walking was completely normal. There was no footprints, no weird, you know, you, you see these TV shows and there's these weird black linings around where ghosts and entities apper upon. There was nothing. Nothing was moved. It sounded as if the footsteps were moving stuff upstairs, like my grandmother's chair, but it was still where it was before. It had never moved. My father was extremely concerned. He, he was terrified. He dropped the baseball bat. He called my grandmother. My grandmother came right home, and they never heard anything. She looked around. She goes, yes, everything is, is perfectly normal. They saw nothing, and my grandmother had never heard the footsteps before. But that changed. Over the next 
10, 15 years. We heard it all the time. At least, they had. I had never heard it. Neither had my cousin or my brother, but my grandparents consistently told me about it. My aunt heard it once or twice, but my dad heard it the most. Well, that was until I was born. This is the only part of the story that personally I'm skeptical on. I'm not exactly sure if I believe what happened here, but you guys can make a decision for yourself. My grandmother was asleep. My grandfather had a habit of getting up early in the morning to take a bath and, and brush his teeth and get ready for work. My grandmother was off, so she slept in, and my grandmother awoke, and she could not move. At the foot of her bed stood a figure. It was tall, skinny, long hair in the back, but she couldn't see a face. With the shadows and the darkness in her room, she, she couldn't see any physical features. She couldn't see a hands. Everything was all one figure. It looked like the hands were in his pocket almost. But he stood there at the foot of her bed. And she could tell that she was facing his front, and he was facing her, looking at her. She couldn't move. She was terrified. She coughed my grandfather. My grandfather was terrified as well. He ran up the steps to figure what was wrong. In the meantime, my grandmother had buried her head into her pillow and used her blankets to cover up her face. My grandfather came into the room. She peered over her blankets and the figure was gone. My grandfather flicked the light on and it was as if nothing was ever there. And my grandfather told me he believed that my grandmother was seeing things in her sleep like a nightmare. And when he entered the room, she woke up. But it was still terrifying. My grandmother truly believes that she saw what she saw. But again, it's hard to say what it was. Maybe she was asleep and she was still seeing the spirit, or maybe the fact that she knew that there was something there caused her to have that apparition appear in her dream. Or maybe she actually did wake up and see a night terror, see the spirit actually there, and it showed itself to her. Now, I haven't had as much exposure to this spirit or whatever it is in my grandmother's house like everyone else had. I was... My, my most vivid memory of it came when I was around the age of 10 or 11. I was getting my hair cut, and uh, so it was my cousin and my baby brother. My brother was very, very, very wee little baby at the time, maybe three or four. And he was getting one of his first haircuts, and... I, my, me and my cousin calmed him down, and I was like, well, I will go to the kitchen, and I will find his baby bottle so that, you know, he can have something to drink when he gets done. I was a very caring bigger brother. I went to the kitchen, and that's when I heard very loud, vivid footsteps upstairs. Now, I had heard it before, but this was the first time that I had ever actually asked my grandmother about it. I came back, and I said, Nana, is there someone upstairs? And she said, no but I was afraid you would hear it. And she explained to me about what had happened, and she never told me the story about the apparition. She had actually told my grandfather, and she also told my dad, and my grandfather was the one that told me about that apparition she saw. She had never mentioned that to me, and my dad was the one that told me about his experience with the spirit. My grandmother never told me. This was my first time me and my grandmother had ever had a conversation about what could possibly be sitting upstairs in her room. She, she then confirmed the stories that my grandfather and my father had told me, but told me that I had nothing to be afraid of. The spirit had caused no harm, and matter of fact, never did anything, just heard footsteps. So I went back to the kitchen, and I heard them louder this time, and it sounded like banging. My grandmother heard that. She said, Eric, just relax, get the bottle, come on back in here. It's not going to be a big deal. Just ignore it. But I couldn't. I went upstairs, and just like my father before me, I saw nothing. There was no movement. There was no dents in the floor. No signs that there was ever anything there in the first place. Matter of fact, the place was so spotless you could barely tell my grandparents slept in it. But no spirit. It didn't show itself to me, and matter of fact, when I turned 18 and moved out, to my knowledge, no one has heard the footsteps since. You know, we heard it occasionally after that incident, but since I turned 18, 
we really haven't heard anything. So, I want to know what you guys think. It sounds unbelievable when I sit here and retell this story, but everything is 100% true to my knowledge. Again, my grandmother's experience is the only part of that story that I feel like is a little abnormal. And obviously, I, if I, 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 if this would be a 15-hour video if I told you every single instance where we heard, heard footsteps, but... It was a consistent thing since my father was young. We would hear footsteps upstairs in her bedroom, and we'd go up there, and there'd be nothing. My grandmother's the only thing that's seen anything potentially uh, of a of an actual physical form. But what do you guys think? Do you have any idea what it could have caused this to begin with? And do you guys have any idea why it has suddenly stopped? I'm 25 now, and no one's heard anything in the last seven or eight years. It's just stopped. Now. The only other things that could have possibly had any influence over this is my grandfather and my grandmother have both retired. And my grandfather retired around the time I was 17 or 18, which would be about the time that these footsteps stopped in the first place. Could my grandfather's retirement cause the spirit to lose interest in the house and leave? Maybe he didn't maybe the spirit didn't enjoy sharing up a house the entire time. I don't know. But ever since my grandfather retired, we've heard nothing. It's very peculiar. Thank you all for listening. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's definitely a newer project or a new attempt that I'm trying here, and I definitely hope you all enjoyed it. My name is The Nomad. This has been the first episode of Spooktober, and I really hope to see you guys here for the rest of the month. Have a great night, and stay spooky. Ha 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 ha!